We're in Ontario, Canada at Axiom's loudspeaker manufacturing facility, and here we have engineer Andrew Welker at the folding table. He's got an M80 exposed for you, and he's going to explain what goes into an Axiom speaker. I thought it would be quite interesting today to show you a view of uh, either a speaker uh, you own, if it happens to be an Axiom product, or actually what goes in into uh, um, building a speaker box. And... Uh, Obviously, most of the time, we only see what's going on the outside of the speaker, not what's inside. So, what we've got is we've got what we call the, the sleeve of the speaker, which is actually one piece um, that comprises the front, back, and the sides of the, of the speaker cabin. And this is actually CNC machined out of a single, solid, complete piece of MBF. And this is, happens to be our standard Boston Cherry finish vinyl. And if I flip this up, you can see that the vinyl's already laminated onto the, onto the MDF or medium density fiberboard, which is the, the wood that actually provides the strength and the good acoustic properties that we want. And in this case, the vinyl is actually providing the hinge to allow us to fold these uh, front, back, and sides together to make the cabinet. And then all we have to do is add the top and bottom pieces. So um, you can see we've got a number of different components in here. We've got ports already mounted. There's two on the back of an M80 and one on the front at the bottom. The crossover network, which divides the frequencies between the different drive units, the woofers, the mid-ranges, and the tweeters is mounted here. We've got braces and in the M80 there are four window braces. And those braces are actually locked in these grooves called dados so that when the entire cabinet is glued together and the glue sets it provides a very very rigid very solid vibration free cabinet. So I can just quickly show how these braces line up. A little bit hard unless you have got three hands to get everything lined up. So that will give you just an idea of where the braces are positioned in an M80. Now another quite interesting thing that's uh, inside any of our products that have a dedicated mid-range are these black items here which are mid-range boxes and you can think of them as a independent sealed enclosure for each of the mid-ranges because the, we don't want the mid-ranges interacting with the, the air pressure from the woofers inside of the rest of the cabinet so they have to be isolated and to do that we have these plastic injection molded um, chambers that are air sealed to the cabinet and if I remove one of these there's actually a gasket that fits into a groove in the wood there it is there so that when the box is actually meets up with this flat rib and it's screwed down now we have an airtight seal this box is uh, quite interesting in its construction and it's it's another example of the sort of level of detail that we go to at Axiom to uh, get the best performance we can out of our different parts and we'll be actually showing and spliced into this video will be a little view of the construction of this part. So essentially once all of these components are mounted the box is glued, glued, glue is put in all of the grooves at all of the openings in the back of the cabinet. It's folded around the top and bottom and it's clamped together until the glue dries. So here we can see a view of the crossover network and all the crossover network does is it's responsible for dividing up the various frequency sections that are going to be reproduced by the tweeter, the mid-range, and the woofer sections. One of the reasons that this is critically important is that A, it's the most important part of the integration between the drive units so that when you listen to the sound, it sounds seamless. There's a seamless blend between all of these different components. 
The other is simply from a practical standpoint. If we tried to put base signals into something like a tweeter, we'd burn it out instantly because it's not designed to produce those low frequency sounds. Here you can see the backside or what is the inside of one of our vortex ports and unlike many conventional ports that are simply circular in shape a, a complete cylinder on the inside ours have these have these flared edges and one of the things that happens is that when you play your speakers at high levels with lots of low frequency information there's a lot of air moving through the ports and the air can actually create turbulence at high velocities which will cause noises, will cause, we call it chuffing. Um, and, it, and it sounds like what you normally hear when, you know, wind is rushing through a door that's not closed properly. So by putting these little fluted areas into the port itself, both the, out, the uh, inside edge and the outside flare, and you can see there the detail, we reduce the air turbulence and hence get a much quieter port. The other thing that happens is that we, we increase the effective surface area or the cross-sectional area of that so that we have the ability to more tightly control the tuning frequencies. Here we can see the backside of where the woofers mount in an M80 and there's these brass colored metal discs that you can see and what those are they're they're actually t-nuts they're metal threaded inserts that mount from the backside with a little flange that keeps them secure against the inside edge of the front baffle so when we take a woofer and we put the screw in to that insert unlike a normal wood screw which has a tendency to if you over tighten it it will spin and allow um, that screw to back off slightly so you can actually get air leaks and other other um, bad effects from that happening because now your your woofer is not tightly tied to the cabinet so the t-nut allows us to actually put quite a bit more torque on the bolts that hold the driver in and um, it will prevent that bolt from backing off in the future and these T-nuts are actually on all of the drive units, from the tweeters, the mid-ranges, and the woofers. I thought we'd talk a little bit about this uh, unassuming looking piece of plastic, which uh, we call our mid-box. And it's actually, you want to think about it as, it's a cabinet for the mid-range drivers in our products like the M60 and the, the M80 that use mid-ranges. Um, and really it uh, it's a fairly complex and involved um, piece of uh, tooling that was required to make this now one of the things like any speaker cabinet um, like the main cabinet of an M80 we don't want any sort of uh, vibrations we want a very solid very rigid um, enclosure for the mid-range and being plastic, if this was simply a straight-sided, uh, straight-walled part, it would be very flexible. And why you see these ridges here is to create strength in the part. So what we do is we reduce any sort of vibrations that can be created from the, the frequencies that the mid-range is reproducing. One of the other things that we're concerned about is the back wave of the mid-range interfering with the signal that's coming from the cone of the mid-range. So I have a mid here and we know that the sound comes off the front of the cone but sound also comes off the back of the cone and that sound even with damping material inside this box will reflect off of the interior surface and that's why this surface is actually uh, has a convex shape to it. So between that and the ridges that are inside the mid-box, we can break, off, break up those reflections and smooth out the frequency response. Now, one of the things that, uh, that we pride ourselves in is we do all of our plastic injection molding and tooling in-house. And 
down here on the floor, we can see the core and cavity side of the tooling that actually makes this part. And if you want to think of it as it's two pieces, one creating the shape of the outside of the part and one creating the shape of the inside of the part. So all of this machining of these metal tooling were done here in-house and we actually will mold this plastic part also with our own molding machinery. So we can see here our molding machine. Uh, this is for injection molding plastic. We predominantly use something called ABS. And this is a 408 ton press. So we can mold actually fairly large parts like some of our larger speaker grills for the, uh, the M80 for instance. And really all the machine does is it, it uh, melts plastic pellets and then squeezes them at high pressure into the mold. And after some cooling time, we will then get a plastic part.